since mobile WiMAX 2.0 is based on IEEE 802.16 E and then M for the physical and the data link layer. So similar to LTEA that was based on certain really advanced features. Here also, um, there are certain interesting wireless or the radio advanced features, which are the highlights of uh, uh, YMAC. So let's look at these uh, one by one. Similar to LTEA, carrier aggregation is the most important feature of uh, mobile WiMAX that is it that helps the users achieve very high data rates adaptively. Since we've already covered it, so we would not like to discuss it any further. The other highlight is the femto cells, which are similar to home in node B, the self organizing networks we, we've already covered it in the context of LTEA and then relays so you see more or less all these features are quite similar to the ones provided by LTEA and that is why when we were discussing their comparison uh, we said uh, in NGN vision there is a possibility that these technologies can be interoperable hence integrable into a unified architecture let's get back to uh, our uh, advanced features so after carrier aggregation we have femtocells uh, femtocells are basically um, base stations with very high transmit power over shorter distance that is um, these femtocells are wireless networks based on small scale home e node b like devices which are installed in the customer premises um, similar to home node b's home e node b's the primary purpose is to provide connectivity and high data rates since similar to home e node b the distance is only restricted to few uh, meters that is up to tens of meters very high data rates can be achieved the femto cells are, are, are also responsible to implement the quality of service um, features uh, and the radio resource control um, on the user equipment which is a mobile phone a tablet or anything else Essentially, the quality of service guidelines, how exactly it would be implemented, the class of quality of service, um, the breakdown of quality of service into network resource parameters such as bandwidth, latency, etc., are translated into um, femtocell based parameters, which are actually determined by the core network so the core network servers are going to determine what quality of service is to be provisioned um, since this quality of service is to be enabled or provisioned in the wireless side so there is a strong connection requirement that has to be established between the core network and the access side network that is uh, our base station in femtocell this connectivity is usually provided through well-known broadband technologies in the fixed domain as well as in the wireless domain uh, like DSL, passive optical network, the cable broadband, etc. Then we have the self-organizing networks, uh, not needing much introduction. We've discussed it in detail. Um, the SON is implemented in um, mobile WiMAX 2.0 for similar requirements as it was for LTEA like for, for for neighbor discovery in case handoff is required between the base stations in mobile WiMAX 2.0 environment uh, to mitigate interference 
provide load balancing if a certain base station is overloaded then its neighbor can be discovered and part of the load can be um, shed off there um, then certain um, frequencies need to be reallocated or reappropriated uh, from one base station to the other and transmit power has to be automatically adjusted to to handle um, uh, the radio conditions like signal to noise ratio SINR, CINR, etc. So uh, SON essentially is uh, Im implemented in more or less same manner as it has been proposed for LTEA. Then we have uh, relay nodes or the um, repeater nodes. Uh, relay nodes actually provide uh, coverage um, uh, by extending or increasing the transmit power in areas which are known as the blind areas whenever uh, high noise is experienced there. So relays actually are uh, passive devices which perform the well-known triple R operation. Uh, the design of relay is uh, quite similar to that of base station because it has to be a wireless, all wireless device, but it has limited capabilities. Uh, in addition to relaying from the base station towards the user equipment, from the user equipment towards the base station, a relay can forward the traffic or repeat the traffic to another relay and to another relay and to another relay. So this is actually known as the multi-hop relaying. Multi-hop relaying is a very advanced feature that allows uh, the coverage in certain inaccessible areas which uh, have the uh, which have very large distance between the user equipment and the base station